Well, good morning from Thorpe Park, and it's only bloody Hyperior opening day, isn't it? Oh, it's so exciting. I can't wait to get in, ride this beast. So let's head into Thorpe Park, shall we? Ah! Well, they certainly expected the numbers this morning. Look at the size of the extended queue just to get your bag search. So we've been held in this holding queue for about an hour now. They're not actually opening the gates until around 9.40 and it's just clicked past that on the clock now, so hopefully we should be moving shortly. So once you came through and scanned your tickets, it actually became a bit unclear which was the Hyperia queue and which wasn't. So it was quite easy to walk past and get caught out completely. So yeah, all a bit chaotic down here. Yeah, so as I was saying, they sort of opened up all, all the uh, turnstiles, sent all the Merlin Pass holders to the right-hand side. But what's happening is the queue for Hyperia is right here, but people are jumping ahead from the turnstiles there, as you can see. Yeah, so they could have done this a little bit better. Hyperia queue. rest of the park. Oh, that's an interesting current in the water today. Maybe there's sharks. And here is the selfie spot. I like how the staff have the uh, gold vests as well. Not all balloons are created equal. So about three hours in since I got here now and this cattle pen section is starting to wear me down, I'm not gonna lie. But hopefully not too much of this to go and then it'll all be straight lines for a bit. Well the Hyperia queue line is still insane. They just let a few of us duck out that are single riders. So I'm gonna see if this single rider line works out a bit quicker. Always hard to tell when it's a two across coaster because you don't get as many opportunities I don't think to get on as a single rider but to skip this lot, I think it's probably worth it. At the entrance for Hyperia. It's quite impressive, isn't it? And to be fair, these things are rattling the trains out. Like one's just landed on the uh, brake run there and another's exited the station, so... Good city operations seem to be on point today. Because they really need to be. There's a lot of people here. Well, it seems to have stalled on the left hill. Halfway up, not moving. So either some numpty's got a phone out, or there's a technical issue, which is just going to slow the queue down even longer. So it happens, unfortunately. So the train being sent around empty at the moment as they work out what the uh, issues are. Pretty standard procedure, but hopefully we'll see people on the next train. And it looks like all riders get a, uh, some sort of certificate as they get off, which is cool. So they do have these steaming signage boards right around the queue line as well, to say things like flying fearless. So I have a video here as you enter the stairway, just explaining the kind of loading procedure. So that train's been sat on the lift hill for a while, so I think we're about to get the announcement again. Yeah, it's quite a few uh, 
few teething issues today. It has stopped quite frequently. I'm hearing that a lot of that happened last night as well at the preview event. So yeah, maybe some sensors a little oversensitive. made it to the station I have one person in front of me on a single ride a light flew and then I'll be in so getting there I think it's been close to seven hours I need to check the time but it's been a lengthy wait but it does look pretty nice in here it's basic but they've added some touches I'd certainly say it's stylized rather than themed but yeah it's solid Hyper is all right, isn't it? I did get massively stapled, which was a bit of a shame, but that is really good. I'm going to take you through the Hyperion shop now. Hyperion, I think it's called. We'll have a look at some merch. I'm going to compose my thoughts and then we're going to break down each element. I'll let you know what I thought. I think I'm going to need more rise to really nail down my kind of where I'd rank this or something. But in the first impressions, oh, that's, that is a really good roller coaster. So let's take a look at the Hyperion merch. Got some various top socks, always go down well. I mean, they are charging a, a premium, I think. I mean, the t-shirts are 33 pounds. I think that's quite a lot for a t-shirt. They have these caps at 18 and some cool little bears down here, but there doesn't seem to be a price on these, but they're, they're kind of cool. Oh, hang on. But they're 18 quid as well. Then we've got water bottles and notebooks. Quite a funky sweatshirt. That's 50 quid. Probably the best of the t-shirt selection, I think, this one. This is some acid tea. Also £33. And then the jacket there. That's seven. And I quite like the gold tea over the back there as well. That one is 28 I do think they are missing out on fridge magnets, which is always a shame, because that's what I collect. <laughs> so I've got to be honest, nothing here is actually grabbing me. I'm not thinking, oh my god, I need some of this immediately. Maybe a considered purchase further down the line. We've got one of the anvils down here. Queue time is still 240 minutes. And this around here is the stage where they had the opening ceremony this morning. They do have a couple of screens there, so I'm not sure whether this will be a permanent installation or if they'll take it out after a couple of weeks. Hey. Hello. So Cloud9 Treats is the eatery here in Fearless Valley. They sell chocolate waffles and sundaes. Looks all right. Quite like the look of them toffee apple bad boys down there. Or a Biscoff waffle as well. So let's talk Hyperion and break down the elements. So first of all, the hour bank come out of the station. It's, yeah, it's almost like a bonus element, isn't it, really? It's, uh, it's a turnaround before you get to the lift hill, so I thought they might as well do something interesting with it. Uh, on the left-hand side, you sort of notice it. I'm not sure you would so much on the right, to be honest. Then you have the drop, and the drop, I think, might be the highlight of the ride. I was in row eight, so near the back. That absolutely just pulls you right over, and as you, well, this, it feels like the first half of the train is twisting already as the back half kind of goes over, so it's a really aggressive drop. The non-inverting Immelman I thought was fine. Um, I think it's probably the weaker of the elements on this attraction. And I think when you consider Saw, which is just over there, has an Immelman as well, you wonder whether that was the most sensible uh, element to put in as your big first element on Hyperia, when that's obviously the same with the roller coaster next door. So maybe something slightly different would have been cool there, but that's probably my only hang up on the kind of layout itself. Then you have that crazy outer bank roll, which is, that's so cool. It takes it quite slowly, so you really do get taken out of your seat for a full three seconds plus. Um, following that, you have the huge hang time dive loop, which is just a crazy stall. Uh, again, just you're just out of your seat for the whole thing. Um, 
the trims do bite quite strong on the splashdown. Uh, and I don't think you really get to experience the splashdown much when you're on ride. It feels like it's more of a visual thing for people who are off-ride. Unfortunately, you can't really see it that well off-ride either. So hopefully that's something they can work on. And as I said earlier in the queue line, I think the whole section around the ride plot area maybe could need a little bit of touching up and it looks like they are still working on it. So that's cool. You then have the um, sort of the twisting air hill. Uh, that's really good. I really like that towards the end, followed by the final airtime hill as you hit the brakes. The brakes do bite just as you come over the hill. So at the back, you don't get much airtime. It's kind of that kind of stealth kinder car kind of thing where you almost get a bit of air and then don't. So overall, really, really good. Um, I think comfortably the best roller coaster here in the UK. Not sure if it would crack my top 10. I think I need a few more rides to really establish that. So I'm going to grab a bite to eat and then I'm going to head to my hotel, get this vlog edited for you guys and uh, I'm going to be back this evening and tomorrow to carry on riding Hyperia. So there will be a full vlog coming and if you're hyped for Hyperia but you're a little bit concerned about this, all these crazy elements with those lap bars, then I do have a video up on the screen now which might help with that. So thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed this opening day morning slash early afternoon sesh from Hyperia and I'll catch you soon.